very good evening. Thank you for joining us. You're watching the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain Television. I'm Olivia da Costa. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman al Khalifa received today the Minister of State for Interior Affairs, Major General Adil Fadl, and Special Forces Commander Colonel Abdullah Zayed. His Royal Highness affirmed that the personnel in various security bodies are sacrificing and performing their duties perfectly so as to maintain order and stability, expressing thanks and support toward their sincere efforts. He added that whomever tries to spread vandalism through acts of riots and arson will be combated with the force of law so as to maintain security and stability, praising the security forces' tremendous efforts in combating terrorism and protecting private and public properties. He said that whomever receives guidance from abroad and works against his country's interests will be dealt with strictly, asserting that security authorities will intensify its efforts to find and reveal all terrorist plans which are aimed at destabilizing security and stability of the homeland. For his part, the Minister of State for Interior Affairs and Special Forces Commander briefed His Royal Highness on the current security status efforts and plans. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman al Khalifa, received at Gudebia Palace this morning the Minister of Health, Dr. Sadiq al Shahabi, and the Ministry's senior officials. His Royal Highness issued directives for reconsidering the Ministry's procedures regarding sickle cell treatment and adopting a more efficient system that guarantees providing patients with treatment in the least time possible. He also directed the patients with severe pain should receive immediate health care through establishing a system for classifying patients according to disease severity. The Prime Minister also directed to investigate the cause of Hussein Mirza al Jufairi, who is a sickle cell patient, and present a report regarding the case. His Royal Highness commended the efforts exerted by the Ministry of Health and its affiliates in implementing the government's strategy and its health sector program. For his part, the Minister of Health expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness for his wise directives and reviewed the undertaken procedures to put them into practice. He hailed His Royal Highness's directives, which reflect his concern for patients' health, noting that the Ministry is establishing more programs that will ensure providing treatment and health care services to all patients. The Education Minister Dr. Majid Al Naimi patronized today the graduation ceremony of the ninth batch of AGU students held at the Sofitel Hotel. The minister said that the Arabian Gulf University, or AGU, is one of the symbols of unity among the GCC and a science beacon where GCC students acquire knowledge. He added that along with its educational role, AGU plays a social role through the Princess Al Jahar. Jahra Bint Ibrahim Al Ibrahim Center for Molecular Medicine and Inherited Disorders and the King Abdullah Medical City project currently under construction in the Kingdom of Bahrain. Following kind gestures from the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Abdullah bin Abdulaziz Al Saud and His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. The Education Ministry's Under Secretary for the Education and Curricular Affairs and AGU's Board of Trustees, Chairman Dr. Yusuf Abdullah Al Mutawa, delivered a statement in which he congratulated the graduates, affirming that AGU has been, since its establishment, a monument of scientific and academic excellence that attracts students from across the GCC countries and prepares them to serve their GCC society. Then the AGU president, Dr. Khalid bin Abdulrahman al Ruheli, delivered a statement in which he extended sincere thanks and gratitude to the GCC leaders for their constant support for and confidence in AGU, lauding the efforts of the education and high education ministers for their follow-up of AGU's work in order to enable it to achieve its noble goals of promoting science and knowledge among GCC citizens. The graduates also spoke during the ceremony and praised AGU's advanced academic courses and prestigious academic reputation, lauding the efforts of AGU's personnel. They also expressed pride in the AGU as a landmark scientific monument that reflects rapprochement, fraternity and common destiny, bonding GCC peoples. After that, the Education Minister presented the 332 graduates from all GCC countries and some Arab states with graduation certificates. <clears throat> the 
the Minister of Municipality Affairs and Urban Planning, Dr. Jumal Kabi, and head of Bahrain's delegation to the 38th session of the Food and Agriculture Organization Conference met today in Rome with FAO Director General Jose Graziano da Silva. During the meeting, the two sides discussed joint international efforts in boosting global food security and curbing malnutrition in line with the FAO strategic plan for 2013-2014 highlighting mutual cooperation between the Kingdom of Bahrain and FAO in exchanging expertise and experiences on farming, fisheries and animal production. For his part, the FAO Director General praised Bahrain's efforts aimed to boost international food security, lauding the Kingdom's contribution alongside the international community in accomplishing the organization's development goals. Now, the National Dialogue Sessions continue today at the ESA Cultural Centre. Hopefully, we'll be able to speak to our correspondent, Mary Claire Honeywell, from the Media Centre to update us on the progress of the session. Mary Claire, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Good evening, Olivia. Um, you're a bit soft. If you could just speak up a little bit um, louder. What can you tell us? Any updates on the dialogue? Well, like you said, here I am at the 22nd session of the National Dialogue being held here at ESA Cultural Centre. Now, before we talk about what's going on in tonight's session, it's worth mentioning that the moderators had to adjourn the last session early due to the National Democratic Opposition Society refusal to join in the discussion in the second part of the session. Now, there are two main points of discussion on the agenda for this evening. The first being more detailed explanations of the points related to principles and values which have been agreed upon previously. Now those points are a reference to National Action Charter and respect for constitution, political reform through constitutional means, protection of citizens' rights, respect for all segments of society, fighting violence, hatred and sectarianism, rejection of foreign interference in national issues, and uh, the rejection of sectarian quota based on sect, sex, background, language, religion and faith. Now the second point for discussion in the agenda this evening is um, the fact that the National Democratic Opposition Societies are to present a document on equal representation, which is a point that's still being hotly debated. Um, pretty much that's all that we have for now. We don't know what's going to happen yet since the session is still in session. Um, but it is worth mentioning that the dialogue spokesman, Mr. Isa Abdurrahman, has said that only sincere intentions, efforts and dedication would overcome all challenges in order to make further achievements in the reform uh, process and that the democratic process would shape the kingdom's future. These, of course, are very wise words that are going to need to be heeded if any positive progress is going to be made. That's all we have for now. It's back over to you, Olivia. Thank you very much, Mary Claire. Thank you for the update. That was Mary Claire at the um, ESA Cultural Center reporting on um, the National Dialogue session. Now, Bahrain parliamentary delegation led by the Chairman of the Foreign Affairs, Defense and National Security Committee at the Representatives Council, MP Abdurrahman Rashid Boumajid, held a meeting in Moscow with the Deputy Chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee at the Russian State Duma, Vladimir Djoborov. During the meeting, MP Ahmed Al-Mullah said that the visit comes to discuss the enhancement of bilateral parliamentary delegation and to exchange expertise and mechanisms of joint coordination at international levels, in addition to exchanging views on regional and international issues. The delegation briefed the Russian official on developments in Bahrain and the progress of national dialogue, as well as the flagrant Iranian interference in the kingdom's internal affairs. The meeting discussed regional and international developments and issues of mutual interest. And for his part, Vladimir Djiborov stressed that what is done by His Majesty the King is considered a great success in confining the subject of Bahrain internally without any outside interference, saying that any foreign interference in Bahrain is considered a bad thing, stressing that Russia's positions on various international issues with no outside interference. He added that each country has privacy and that Arab and Islamic countries have privacy that must be respected and it is very good that the Kingdom of Bahrain has pursued quiet and peaceful solutions to solve their internal problems 
wishing Bahrain for the progress and prosperity. The Royal Charity Organisation or the RCO organised a summer camp under the patronage of RCO Chairman of the Board of Trustees, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa at Al Ramli Complex and the support of the Lulu Hypermarket. About 100 participants from the Children's Foundation were present. It aims to encourage children to gain leadership skills. It is also an opportunity to enable them to explore their talents and direct them in the right path. The three-week camps consist of a number of programs and activities in addition to language teaching programs. <laughs>